Harper Borchardt and joining me now is Ed Keating from Cannabis Media. So when we hear the word Cannabis Media, we think, okay, where are the press releases? Where's the TV show? But that's not really what you guys are focused on. You're more focused on licensing. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely, Deborah. So we focus on the licenses that have been issued by state regulatory agencies. So our database is really a compilation of over 25,000 marijuana and hemp licenses from the U.S. and Canada. So it's really all about that data that is on a license, in addition to other data that we add to the, uh, to the license data from the states. So that's got to be pretty tricky in California because there's temporary licenses, permanent licenses. Right. How do you address that? So right now there are over 6,000 temporary licenses that have been issued by California. We have them all in our database and we've been adding data to them and we have been watching carefully and working with the regulator to figure out what's happening next. We've learned that those temporary licenses will continue to be issued through the end of December. Really? And also that they may be changing the license numbers so when somebody gets a temporary and it goes to a full license, the old one sort of goes away. So we're keeping our eye on that because it is a, a data challenge, but one that you know we do for our customers. Well, that brings up a really good point because it's not guaranteed if you get a temporary license, you're going to get a permanent one in California. That's right. So I, I would think that for you know dispensaries and all these companies that's really critical because you don't want to work with someone that isn't licensed that's right and and i think uh the Lori ajax in california has done a great job of reminding people you only want to work with licensed partners however they've also understood that it's been a slow process for people to get these annual licenses not many have gone through yet so they don't want to tank the industry, so I think they're being smart in trying to extend those, and that's why they put in that sort of extension license, like, hey, we need more time. So I imagine, and from what I've seen, a lot of people will probably be going down that route to get their paperwork uh, together on time. And what about licenses where the ownership changes? Because we've seen a lot of this happen, that as the industry has matured, in a lot of states, people sell off, they, they change owners. Are, are you able to track that? Uh, we'll track whatever the state issues us. Okay. So, and typically the state requires that information to be part of their license or the information that say like, who is the owner? Some states are better than others in sharing that. In a lot of cases, we have to work with the Secretary of State's office to try and go up a level or two to figure out who really owns it. So we do our best to keep track of that, um, but it's mostly more about the licenses uh, as opposed to necessarily all the owners. And I would think that something like what you're doing is critical to some of these websites that are trying to track people like like a weed maps or, or something like that where they're trying to show dispensaries that are licensed that's true we do have uh, several software companies that use us for exactly that because they realize that we're doing this nationwide every day we're tracking these licenses so they don't have to it's, it's, it's gotten a lot more complicated than just going to a website and grabbing information from the state there's a lot of normalization that we do to make it easier for companies to keep that data up to date so that folks can find the compliant businesses that they want to partner with all right great well it sounds like you're doing some really important work there that's Ed Keating of Cass and Bi Cannabis Media and I'm Deborah Barchart with the Green Market Report Thank <laughs> you.